Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. After many days of experimenting with voice cloning using RVC, I can now finally share a whole bunch of tips and tricks with you. Some of them are a little bit nerdy, like tensorboard graphs and modified optimizers, and some of them not so much. Hopefully there will be at least a little nugget of information for everyone here, as I've been through a whole wide range of things. Talking of things, here is a quick one to start with. If you want to share your trained model with somebody else running RVC, all you need to do is give them the PTH file from your weights directory, as an example, and also the added index file from your logs directory. So there's my logs directory, so you'd also have to give them that file as well. As you can see, the index file can be a couple of hundred meg, so you may want to zip those two files together. All they then need to do is put the PTH file back into their own weights directory and the index file into a logs directory with the same name, so they'll need to make that and then they can use the voice themselves. And on that note, you may also be interested in doing a little bit of cleaning up. If you finish training, then those are the only two files that you're really going to need. You may like to save a little bit of space by removing those old D and G files and also getting rid of all those sample directories as well. I've been doing a fair amount of experimenting with the Mangio RVC fork. No, not a mango and a fork. It's... No, Never mind, it's meant for experimentation, and that's exactly what I did with it. Completely ethical experiments, of course, you, you do understand. Installation is thankfully just like any normal Python application. There isn't a pre-built binary package for you this time. You'll need to download, install, and run Anaconda if you haven't already. Create a new environment via your Anaconda prompt. Download and install Mangio RVC plus the weights. And then you'll be able to run the application. If like me, you already have the weights downloaded, then you can of course just go ahead, save a bit of time and space and link them instead, rather than downloading or copying the files. For Mangio, the particular commit I'm using here is shown on the screen at the moment. With this particular version, there are two methods of running via the limited web user interface or using the CLI, which has some extra features, such as this hybrid F0 computation method. As you can see, the web interface is almost identical to the original one, apart from the color and a couple of extra options on the train tab there for crepe and Mangio crepe as well, with additional options on the model inference tab too. Do these new options make any difference? Well, you'll be glad to know that I've got graphs. Talking of graphs, if you want to see the graphs for your own training logs, then you'll just need to run the tensorboard command and point it to your logs directory, which is typically logs in this case. Or if you want to remotely access that web interface, you can add the bind all option in there as well. That should give you a link to your local host on port 6006, and then you've got a whole bunch of options that you can set up. Personally, I like to set the smoothing quite high. There I've got it to 0.95, and also the tooltip sorting method to descending. You can then close those settings down. And there's another little cog at the top, and there I like to enable automatically reloading data. For the graphs, I like to use the ones I've got shown there, so the total loss for the discriminator, and then various losses for the generator, FM, KL, MEL, and also the total loss as well. If you want to change the log interval, there it is in the JSON file. Obviously, it's the particular one that you're choosing. I'm using 40K here, so the 40K JSON file at the top there, you've got log interval. By default, it's 200, and I've set that to 100 instead. Alrighty, so now we've got loads of graphs from all my experiments. Let's take a little look at these results. First of all, just a little bit of information about the data set I used for all of these tests. It's my voice, 273 samples between 3 and 10 seconds long. It's all me, some singing, some speaking. I've normalized them all. They're silent truncated. They're all in WAV format. The training I did was for 200 epochs. I did the train feature index first and then the train model. 
and the particular changes I made are reflected by the test names. So you'll be able to see the results for all of these. As a minor note here, when using crepe, I got frequent GPU out of memory errors, resulting in fewer files in the 2A and 2B directories at first, as well as massive system memory usage that went all the way up to 42 gig. I got similar RAM usage for Mangio crepe, but without the GPU out of memory errors. Interestingly enough, running the pitch extraction for a second time didn't use loads of RAM, and then the file numbers in the directories matched. Right, so now you know the setup, which one did best? As I mentioned before, I've got the five graphs here, the first one there being the total discriminator loss, not the most important thing in the world, but it is just something I like to keep an eye on. The rest of the generator losses, most of the loss being made up from FM and MEL. Lower numbers are better, so we want those lines to keep on going down. If your line starts trending up, it's just getting worse and worse, so don't do that stop earlier graphs. How low can the total loss go? Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Also, how much of a difference does that actually make in the long run? Well, we'll find out. Our first little friend here is harvest in green. Nice curves could potentially go a little lower there, but is crepe better? No, not that sort of crepe. This is a convolutional representation for pitch estimation. And remember that I don't want to see a field when I mention harvest. Okay, fine, whatever. Now, crepe typically beats harvest in noisy environments, irregular singing styles, and things like that. So if I add both crepe and mangio crepe to the graph, let's have a look. There's mangio crepe, and there is normal crepe. Are they any lower? No, they're not. So we've got normal crepe up the top there with a, an absolute value of 38.37. Mangia crepe in the middle and harvest actually has the lowest value there. But I'm a nerd and I like to keep experimenting. So maybe those hybrid methods will help us get a bit lower. If I add the harvest, do and crepe hybrid, then oh, it's kind of in the middle with harvest still looking to be the best. All right, how about if I use harvest still, but change the optimizer from Adam W to R Adam and also double the learning rates, the learning rate being found in that config file we had a look at earlier. And you can change the optimizers in that load pre-train Python file there. All right, now we're cooking with numbers. That's quite a difference there. Looking like the total loss is lower on account of the FM loss being lower here, that purple line, as you can see, quite a considerable difference. Now let's rinse and repeat with some other hyperparameter changes. And after many different tests, it looks like using harvest with diffgrad, a higher learning rate, and a slightly different seed actually gave us lowest total loss. Just before the last entry here on step 3800, we can see some of the best scores, and there's also a full two-point lead between crepe and the harvest plus diffgrad. Of course, these are just results for my one data set, and I'd encourage you to do your own testing. Feel free to let me know down in those comments if you find anything interesting. These low numbers are all very well and good, but what do they actually sound like? How much difference is there between the best and the worst? Yes, I've moved on to the audio section of the tips and tricks now. Input, process, output. That's computing in a nutshell. Garbage in, garbage out. And to make sure you don't put garbage in, you'll need some crispy, clean audio. This is typically easy if you're changing your own voice to sound like someone else, as you can just record yourself. However, if you've just got pre-mixed music tracks, then you may want to go with something like the full Ultimate Vocal Remover, instead of just using the Vocal Separation tab in the web interface. For UVR, there is a massive Windows file you can just download, or you can also install it normally. Like it says there, ideally you'll have at least 8 gig of VRAM on your NVIDIA GPU, as these models can be computationally expensive. For some of the MX models, it will also help to have at least 48 gig of system RAM. 
The first time you run this, you may want to spend a little bit of time in the settings, just looking over everything. It's the little spanner icon down there. If you click that, then I would highly recommend turning on the enable help as then you'll get little tool tips. You may also want to go into these advanced VR options and enable TTA. The download center is where you'll be able to find models and download them as you won't have any to start with. To begin with, you may like to download the models on the screen now. Then you can just select your input audio, your output directory, the process method and model, and finally start processing. I found a lot of audio typically has reverb or echo, so you'll likely need to split out the vocals first and then run one of the de-echo or de-reverb modules. If you like, you can also run an ensemble mode, which has various different models running together. I've got one there saved, which uses various different models. Those ones highlighted in blue. And also you've got an ensemble algorithm option there. I've gone for average average. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like you can have an ensemble with both vocal split and de-echo, but hey, even after you've processed that audio, you may still need to do a little bit of a cleanup and here Audacity is your friend. This is great for cleaning up any of those last remaining little glitches like that one there. It may be that your audio could benefit from a little noise reduction. That's quite easy. Just go to effect, down to noise reduction, get a noise profile for the noisy bit, then select all of the audio and then effect repeat noise reduction and that will clean up your entire clip. Another little trick is to invert audio for a quick cleanup. Say you had something like the example clip I'm going to use in a moment, which is from this Josh Woodward album. As you can see, there is an instrumental version available here. I went with my favorite regret because it sounds cool. If I load both the instrumental and non-instrumental versions together, then select the instrumental version and effect invert, day that we met I'll never forget then as you can see it's nicely cancelled out a lot of the instrumentals and I got fairly decent vocals obviously there's a little bit of music in the background but then you can run that through UVR other handy things you may want to do in Audacity include normalization say you've got a massive data set with loads of different samples that are all different volumes then you can pop them into Audacity, press Control A to select everything and then do Effect, Normalize and then set everything to the same sort of volume. Same sort of thing goes with clips that have a lot of silence in. So you could go to Effect, Truncate Silence and then you've got a couple of different options there. You can either truncate or compress excess silence. Those are the settings I like to use. A threshold of about minus 45 with a duration of 0.25 and either compress or truncate as you like. That will get rid of a lot of the silences. Listen to them afterwards because you don't want to cut off some of the words by being too aggressive here. Right, now I've got a couple of final tests to finish up that experimenting from earlier. The crepe with all the defaults has the worst score and harvest with diffgrad has got the best. So it's time to compare what they actually sound like. Of course, during inference, we also have all those options to use crepe and mangio crepe as well. So I used all three on both the best and the worst ones. Just so you know what the original audio clip sounds like that I'm going to convert, here is a clip from that Josh Woodward song. He's gentle and kind and totally blind to not see the life we could lead. First of all, let's take a listen to that as me using that default crepe model which had the highest loss. He's gentle and kind and totally blind to not see the life we could lead. And now again with the lowest loss model. He's gentle and kind and totally blind to not see the life we could lead. That's quite the difference, eh? Now, one thing that did go funny is when I used Mangio Crepe with any model. Now, hold on to your ears for this one. Oh, he's gentle and kind. 
and I'll just stop it there. So as you can see, basically it's turned the breath into a really funny, weird sort of robotic noise. So it seems to me that for the most part, you'll be absolutely fine just using Harvest at the moment. It's faster, it uses fewer resources, and certainly for my data set at least, it works absolutely fine. Other optimizers do show some promise, however, and I may have to train for a little longer on a couple of those and see what they turn out like. For the final mix of that clip, I've got the female solo, me solo, and a tiny duet to help give an impression of the final quality here. He's gentle and kind, totally blind. To not see the life we could lead And he was destined to be My favorite regret 